Welcome to 4.8. <clears throat> We're looking at uh, using isosceles and equilateral triangles. As you're familiar with, isosceles, iso means same, scalene, like skeleton, uh, has the idea of a leg there. So it has two legs that are the same in your isosceles triangle. Equilateral, equal, lateral is like a lateral pass. Um, your lats on the side of your uh, body, those are the muscles on the side, so equilateral is equal sides. Real simple section is our last section of chapter 4, and we are done with chapter 4. So our essential question, how do I use theorems about isosceles and equilateral triangles? Let's define an isosceles triangle first. Uh, it is an a isosceles triangle if it has at least two congruent sides. That's interesting. We're accustomed to saying isosceles triangle has two congruent sides, but even a equilateral triangle really is an isosceles triangle uh, because it has at least uh, two congruent sides. Actually, it has three, right? Congruent sides. And when an isosceles triangle has exactly two congruent sides, then these two sides are called the legs. And the angle formed by the legs is called the vertex angle. So this is how we are accustomed to seeing an isosceles triangle. Think of a person standing and these are his legs or her legs coming down and uh, they are standing on the base here. So up on top, that's the vertex, vertex, and on the bottom is the base. And these are, this is your vertex angle and this, this uh, on the bottom here uh, are your base angles. Hey, but what if you have a isosceles triangle that's on its side like this? Uh, then still, uh, this uh, the side that is opposite of the vertex, and let's call the vertex as the one that's created by uh, these two congruent sides. Uh, this is your vertex, so the side opposite of that vertex uh, angle is your base. So the base is not always the one that's on the bottom because as you know we can just rotate this guy around and now this one's on the bottom okay so do not just grab the side that's on the bottom it is the side that's opposite of the vertex angle our base angle theorem says that if two sides of a triangle are congruent then the angles opposite of them are also congruent so if all that we are told it's just that we have two, and I should have made this more distinct, I don't have a pin with me, or a colored uh, pin, but uh, these, uh, we're, we're only told that these two sides are congruent, then we can conclude, based on this theorem, that the angles opposite of them, so this angle here, and also this angle over here, these two angles are congruent to each other. So if uh, there are two sides that are congruent, then the angles that are opposite of those two sides are also congruent with each other. The converse of that, remember converse, think of a person with their converse sneakers on and they're switched, they have their right sneaker on their right or left foot and so forth. So converse, instead of saying we have two sides that are congruent, now we're going to start with two angles that are congruent. And the converse then is saying that if we know that two angles are congruent, then the sides opposite of those angles are also congruent. So whether we start with the sides, and so if we start with the sides, we can say that the angles are congruent, or if we start with the angles, we can say that the sides are congruent. Let's look at an example here in our textbook. And we are told that triangle D, you see all this? Triangle D, E, F, or in this triangle, that segment D, E, their segment D, E, is congruent to segment D, F, their segment D, F. And you know, as you read this, make sure that you take all that information and put it onto your diagram. In this case, it is already put there. So these two angles are congruent and they're asking us to name the two congruent angles. So, um, here's the bottom 
uh, of the triangle. So is this the base? No, it's not. Remember the vertex angle is the one that's created by the congruent leg. So here's your vertex. And across from the vertex uh, is your base. So here is your base. And so therefore these angles here would be your base angles. And the angles opposite of your two congruent sides, these are the ones that are congruent uh, with each other. See how that works? Pretty simple, huh? Let's turn over here. Let me show you another example of that. A little more complicated. Kind of getting you ready for what you have here in your notes. So, in this uh, diagram we're told that uh, segment AE is congruent to segment DE. So these two segments are congruent to each other. Therefore, let's just ignore the triangle that's in, this, in the middle here. And opposite, so here is an isosceles triangle on the outside and the opposite angles of the, the angles opposite of the congruent sides uh, will be the ones that are congruent. So here we would say that angle A is congruent to angle D. Or if we were told that uh, segment AB, so let's do this here, let's erase this, segment AB here is congruent to segment EB. That's kind of funky. So I tell you what, I could go ahead and leave this Let's go ahead and leave this single tick marks there. And if I wanted to now say, as they're telling me, that segment AB is congruent to segment BE, uh, what would I need to do? Well, remember, I cannot use single tick marks because I've already used that to represent these two sides that are congruent. So let's put double tick marks on these. And these two segments are congruent. So do you see the isosceles triangle there? Then the angles that would be congruent would be this angle, BAE, this angle here, and also BEA, this small angle uh, up on top. So this is your vertex angle, here is your base, and these are your two uh, base angles. See how that works? So that should prepare you to be able to do this exercise that you have here uh, in your uh, notes. In fact, I can pull the book out underneath there. There you go. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and uh, do number one and also number two. A corollary, remember a corollary is um, a statement, a true statement that's easily proven um, from a theorem. So once you establish a particular theorem, then a corollary is something that's easily proven based on that previous theorem. So a corollary to the base angles theorem. So here is our base angles theorem that the angles opposite of two congruent sides, the angles are congruent. A corollary to that is that if a triangle is an equilateral triangle, then it is also an equiangular triangle. And you know that equa means equal, angular means angle, so equal angles, meaning that each of these three angles are congruent to each other. So what they're telling us is that if they start out with, and all that we know, the only thing that we know, is that these three sides are congruent to each other, then we can say for sure that the all three of these angles are congruent to each other. The way we do that, of course, is to say, okay, let's pretend that this is an isosceles triangle, and it is an isosceles triangle, but uh, based on what we know with an isosceles triangle, that these two angles would be congruent, and then we could even kind of rotate this guy around if you wanted to kind of look at it in that way. And here's the isosceles triangle again, and these two angles will be congruent, and rotate it around again, and these two sides are congruent, and therefore these two angles are going to be congruent. And now we've proven that all three of those angles are congruent with each other. That's a corollary, a very close, uh, easy to prove once you have established a particular theorem. And the converse of that, so the first corollary was 
that if we start out with equilateral triangle, then it is always going to be an equiangular triangle. The converse of that is that if we start out with an equiangular triangle, then it will be an equilateral triangle. Okay, that's it as far as the basic principles. Let me just apply that, help you to apply it, by looking at this example here. There we go. And they want us to find <clears throat> the measure of these angles. So I'm looking here and we have equilateral triangle. And as we know, the corollary there was that if it's an equilateral triangle, then it will also be an equiangular triangle. We know based upon the triangle sum theorem that the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is uh, 360 degrees. So you take your 360 and divide it by 3. And that's going to give us... Uh, whoa, no, whoa, I messed it up, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was. I knew that didn't sound right. The sum of the interior angles of a any triangle is a 180 degrees. Okay, and then divide that by three, and you get 60. Whew! I almost led you down the wrong path. You were probably warned. Why didn't you stop me? Why did you say something? Why did you just allow me to make that mistake, man? Speak up next time. <laughs> okay, so we know that if it's an equilateral triangle. It will also be an equiangular triangle, and because uh, the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is 180 degrees, and all of them are congruent with each other, therefore take 360, no, 180, come on, dude, make the same mistake, 180 divided by 3, and you get 60. So each of these angles will always be, for all equilateral triangles, will always be 60 degrees. Here's another example that will be helpful for us. We want to find the values of X and Y in this diagram. So what do we have here? Well, let's see. Uh, I have these arc, single arcs for each of these three. So what is that telling me? That's telling me that these three angles are congruent with each other. So this triangle up here is an equiangular triangle, therefore it's also an equilateral triangle, and therefore these two sides are congruent to each other. So if this side is 4, then what is y equal to? Yes, you are right, it is also equal to 4. And also, what is the length of this side down here? It is also equal to 4. This is equal, because all equal angular triangles are also equilateral triangles. And I also see that these two angles, these small angles here, uh, both have double arcs on it. That means that these two angles are congruent with each other. Therefore, this angle, this triangle on the bottom here, this is a, an isosceles triangle. And the uh, sides opposite of the congruent angles are also congruent. So we start out with these congruent angles. And we go opposite of that, so these two sides are congruent with each other. Therefore, we can say 4 equals x plus 1. And, of course, all I have to do is subtract 1 from both sides, and x equals 3. Or actually, 3 equals x, the way I'm writing it. Hey, what is it? What um, uh, property of equality is it that allows me to switch these and say x equals Three. It's not reflexive. Remember, reflexive says three equals three, but when you switch it like that, that's symmetric. So the symmetric property allows us to say at the very end here that uh, x equals three. Okay, that should be sufficient for you to be able to conquer and wrestle with at least, you can do it, uh, this problem down here with uh, five and then. Oh yeah, what did I want to do with this? Use parts B and C in example 4 and side 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 congruence postulate to give a different proof that these two. Tell you what, ignore this. I uh, forgot to delete this from the notes. And so if you try this, then I know that you did not listen to the video. <laughs> and uh, just ignore that. Don't bother uh, doing that one. But do make sure that you do uh, number uh, 5 uh, here. Hope that's helpful. 
May the Lord bless you, and I look forward to seeing you in class.